Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name's Shane. Today we're going to jump right on into it and start disassembling this cover from the left hand side that covers up the hydraulic cylinder for David Brown 990 tractor. And basically, what we'll do is take this apart. I need to replace an O ring in there. And uh, we'll see how annoyingly aggravating this can be. Stay with me. First thing we have up top here is a snap ring. Let's see if we can get that thing off of there. There it goes. Let's make sure I don't lose that. This just pops right off. This dirt extract, uh, dirt excluder that does a horrible job of excluding dirt comes off. There is a second snap ring down here. As you can probably see, My lift latch only has one of the hardened pins that hold the, hold the arms up. The other one broke off right here. I'm not going to replace it. It holds up just fine with one. I don't put, I don't hold up any weight. All I do is temporarily use it to hold the arms up if I'm working behind the tractor on the hydraulics. I don't use this in day-to-day -day operation. One day, if I want to fix it, I'll fix it. There, is, there are instructions in the book. Uh, in both the T as in Thomas and V as in Victor uh, service manuals that I've mentioned in several videos uh, on how to re-drill and put in a new pin on either side, you know, changing the location of the holes. But these are press fit, I believe, and are hardened. I just haven't had a need to replace them. Second snap ring. There is a set screw on the side here. Go ahead and remove that. All right, set screw. Has a little tip on it there. spring. I've had this apart once before, but I didn't change the O-ring out. The O-ring and the spacer, I don't know if you can see it or not from this top view. If you look, you see it right there in this hole. There's the O-ring and spacer. I've got to drive them out of there somehow. I didn't change them out last time I was in here. Change it out, not them. All right, I've got some stuff here to try to work this free. Let's see, what's it binded up on in there? Absolutely nothing. It should just slide right out. That spacer ring. Ah. <laughs> One tap from a punch and it comes out of there. Okay, yeah, it was just hung up. Spacer ring. Last but not least, the O-ring should fall out at some point, or I may have to go get it. Pretty good. Oh, it's still in there. Yeah, it's still in there. And finally, the O-ring. Still somewhat soft, but it is flat as a flapjack. And I have the new proper O-rings to put in there. 
O-ring singular. This is the groove that you can see here that that set screw runs, runs in. Set screw will screw into the side of the body here and be in that channel. I'll just clean this up a bit and get it all reassembled. All right, we're cleaned up. Everything is good to go here. Cleaned up the faces. Wire brushed everything. Got this hammered out a little bit more, flattened. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this thing is horrible. <laughs> I need a new one, but it'll fit, I hope. We'll see. So we have the uh, shaft. Uh, let me show you the shaft real quick. The shaft has a lot of pitting in that area right there. A lot of pitting, but I don't think that'll be contacted while the latch is off. It might be contacted when the latch goes in that might have been where my leakage was happening. It's also, there was a lot of trash under the bottom here, which I, I wire brushed off. I was very careful around this just because it is, it does have an O-ring that fits on it. But anyway, so we go with spring. This collar, this washer, spacer ring then the O-ring. Dash 115 O-ring, let me check and verify. O-ring, three quarter inch internal diameter, 75 DRO, dash number is dash 210, one inch outside diameter, three quarter inside diameter, and eighth cross section. It's what's specified in the book at least. So we'll try to send this back home somehow. Okay. Well, that may have been easier than I thought. Maybe not. There we go. Okay, we've got the set screw in place. Take and tighten this down. Keep the shaft pressed in against that spring. <clears throat> there we go. So we don't have to keep pressing it down. So basically what you saw there was me, I put a punch in the vise and basically tapped it down on the inside there until I got it to go past that little ridge and get it compressed on the spring, holding it down and getting that set screw bolted in place. Inside this first ring here, a snap ring goes on. Before I do that though, I will oil it, oil the shaft and all of this. If I haven't already shown you, I'll go ahead and put a picture up on the screen here of what this looked like the first time I took it apart. This dirt excluder ring was absolutely chock full of dirt and was kind of skewed and bent up on this shaft here. I could not get the latch to to turn basically on this when I first took it off last year. 
and I, I got it fixed and got it back on there, but it was a pain in the rear end for sure. Okay, what was I doing? Oh yeah, snap ring. This snap ring goes on. Like so. Which keeps it from going in too far. Then we will put the dirt excluder on and I pushed the shaft out too far. I pushed it out way too far. I'm going to have to make an adjustment to that. You want it to where it will catch on the on the dirt excluder ring. I think. So I'll put my punch back in. Because when I re when I let off on this set screw, that spring is going to spring backwards. Well, maybe I will just leave it like so. Let's try to put it back on like that. Sure. All right, set screws released. Let's try to put it back on that way. All right, let's see how this will go in, if it will at all. got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. It's that simple. I fought this for two hours trying to get that spring pin, the spring clip to seat in that uh, groove. Every time I would, ah, there we go. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. It didn't seat fully. Knew this was going to be a pain in the rear. That's the reason I keep my hand over this. messed anything up in there, have I? Huh? Did it stay? I think we've got it seated. Please say I've got it seated. Second try. Last time it was like 60 tries. Every time I went to loosen the set screw, pull back on this to test the operation of it back and forth, this spring pin, spring clip would just spring right up. I never could get it to seat properly. Now, what I'm hoping is that everything inside is fine. Nope, there we go. It came off again. know if that's in there or not. What do you guys think? How many times is this? Three or four or five? How many have I cut out? I don't know. 
I need my safety glasses. I am not about to have a spring clip go to the eyeball. Spring off of there. I do not trust it. It may be on there. It may be on there. Of course, what's probably going to happen is I'll get it remounted to the tractor, get everything back on, and I'll come out here one day and this, or I'll be taking it out to the field and I'll probably, it'll probably spring loose and this will be on the side of the road somewhere or it'll be in the field somewhere covered up by dirt. That's probably what's going to happen one day. I do not trust that spring pin spring clip, whatever the heck you call those things. Do not trust it. <laughs> what does it say to do with the set screw? Can't remember. Let me do a little reading here real quick. Clean the locating screw and smear with Loctite and screw it in until it touches the bottom of the pin groove and unscrew a quarter of a turn. Okay. So you're supposed to put Loctite in there. I don't have any Loctite. What I will do is put a little gasket sealer on it. Basically what this does is during reinstallation, you push it down and to keep this shaft from shooting right back down through the bottom. But during operation, it goes in that groove you saw on the side of the shaft to ensure that the uh, shaft doesn't rotate. It keeps the shaft in alignment up um, through the bore. I, need, I guess I need to go get me some Loctite at some point because I don't have any. So for now, we're just going to put a little dab of gasket sealer since it's sticky on that screw, since I don't have Loctite. You know, it's nothing like doing a job without everything you need. Clean the locating screw and smear with something to make it stick, it says Loctite. Then screw it in until it touches the bottom of the pin groove and unscrew it a quarter of a turn. So we're touching the bottom of the pin groove there. A quarter of a turn would be right there. All right, this is done. I'm gonna leave it sitting overnight. Operate this several times. Make sure that is in its seat. It's pretty smooth. Okay, I'm happy with that. Again, there's the pin is broken there. One of the pins is broke. I don't use this to hold up any kind of anything with implements. It is simply used as a way to keep the arms up temporarily while I do something. Uh, I do not leave it in the up, uh, locked position very much at all. I don't. I don't leave it locked with any kind of weight on it. It's always sitting just like that in an unlocked position. This does not have a gasket associated with it. This is a metal to metal fit back over here to the ram cylinder itself. I use Permatech gasket uh, dressing and sealer. I think it's the equivalent to Halimar Blue. This stuff, gasket dressing and sealant. It's fuel resistant, which oil resistant, that kind of thing. It's blue colored. And from what I read online, it's basically Permatech's Halimar Blue type stuff. Anyway, what you use here is jointing compound. I'll clean all this up a little bit, wire brush it very gently since it is a, a jointed fit, a jointed fit uh, and get all this cleaned up and ready to go back on the tractor. Uh, I can't remember how many times it took me, but uh, five or six times to get that to get that seated is a whole lot better, a whole lot faster than the two hours that I fought this last time. 
Of course, I didn't know what I was doing last time either. All right, this one's done. It's completed. We've got this fixed up. It's ready to go back on the tractor. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great one.